Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch Slayer Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do an in-depth sniff review of the newly released Lafco New York Greenhouse Wild Honeysuckle Candle. But before we dive into that, if you are new to Touch Slayer Twice, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for fine home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. If you wanna learn more about what I do, why I do it, how I do it, you can check out my website at touchfiretwice.com and follow me over on Instagram, also at touch the fire twice. But for now, let's get into wild honeysuckle greenhouse. So first I'll start off by saying that it's been quite a while since I have created content, uploaded a video here to touch fire twice. I am back. I'm going to try to dive right back in to get, you know, at least a handful of videos up every month following the types of videos that I have made for the past couple of years after I returned in 2021 my in-depth sniff and comparison reviews, my hauls, deep dives on specific scent notes, and really trying to focus on that educational side of things to understand our mood, moment, memory, space, place, or times that we're uncovering or being transported to within fine home fragrance. I will start off from the jump saying that Lafco was generous enough to send me this candle. I was not compensated for the review. I have not been asked to provide a positive review. As always, whether I am sent products to review or purchase on my own, you're going to get the full honest truth from me. I'm always going to seek the good, look for the good, but I won't shy away from the truth or, or potentially critiques on a product. But I will say that though I've received a handful of items generously from Lafco, vast majority of what you see are candles and items that I purchased myself with my own money. And frankly, Lafco specifically is probably one of my go-to brands for gifting just because the presentation is so good, the vessels are so luxurious and beautiful, and the fragrances are super unique to Lafco. So, so if you're not familiar with Lafco already, go ahead and check out my playlist of other Lafco reviews that I've done over the past couple of years. But we're going to dig into the new spring 2024 release of Greenhouse Wild Honeysuckle. Starting here just with their packaging, their packaging you know, is really the best of the best. They've started to do over the past year or so, these wraparound sleeves that are just so beautiful with the art direction, with the vibe they're going for, with the fragrance. You can see this one has a little bit of sheen to it and it's just kind of this, let's say watery, dewy green with that metallic green imprint on the box there with the name and all the branding. And this appears in Lafco's house and home collection where they always have a name of a place or a space in your home associated with the fragrance, both from the notes, the overall aesthetic, the colors that they choose. So you might have bedroom, kitchen, den, terrace, treehouse, greenhouse. So let's open this up, look at the candle, and then we'll get into the scent story. So we just slide this off here and you can see the traditional packaging with that ribbon across. And as you can see on the label here, the primary notes for Greenhouse Wild Honeysuckle, which are Violet Leaf, Honeysuckle, and Mint. Just lift this lid off. These are great for storage. I always say this in every review I do of Lofco. These are the best packaging in the industry when it comes to storage as well, because these luxury candles that are big, you're often not going to burn through them in two weeks. It's going to be something that you might keep for a year and go in and out with seasons. There is no shaking around in here. Nothing's going to happen. There's thick foam within the lid there and a really strong base here to keep your candle secured, which I just love. And then we get into the actual candle itself. It smells good. We take our dust cover off and you have the vessel. Lafco is known for their beautiful hand-blown glass vessels. This is sort of, I'd almost call it like a soft, let's say almost a sage sort of green. It's not a bright, fresh green. It's sort of a, a yellow green, midsummer sort of peaceful, calming green with the little wisps within there to see through just a little bit of and opacity. Their glass is actually hand blown in the Northern Czech Republic at a glassworks that has been around since 1713. So true artisan craftspeople that create these vessels. And unlike most candle companies that say, oh, we use our glass vessels, which sure you can, but how many vessels do you need for cotton balls and, <laughs> and pens? The, the Lafco ones are truly worth repurposing and reusing. You throw a plant in here, makes a really nice hefty, hefty cocktail glass. The smaller one's also great cocktail glasses. Just a really big fan of the beauty of their vessels. This is their 15.5 ounce signature candle, single wick. This fragrance also comes in the 6.5 ounce classic 
and their six ounce classic reed diffuser as well. Now, if you're not familiar with Lafco, again, we have these hand-blown glass vessels. They use a primarily soy wax blend. They say just a hint of paraffin added to it because that does help with the strength throw and projection because molecularly soy is denser and heavier. The paraffin is lighter and it allows the fragrance to carry a little bit more easily through the air through your home. They use essential oils so we don't have synthetics in here and of course they use 100% cotton wicks. And for those who are wondering now that this seems to be something that with some candle brands frankly we hear of more often of where are they manufactured, where are they poured, the Lafco candles are all hand poured in the United States. Let's get into the candles. So I'm going to talk the primary notes, I'll redo their scent story, I'll tell you what I think about it and then as I love to do there are 11 notes in this master you know perfumer built fragrance. We're going to talk through all 11 notes digging into what are they, what do they mean, where are they from, and how are they used in fragrance, because the best way to learn about fine fragrance, the best way to learn about anything, research, is to understand what are you smelling. So you say, oh, I really like tarragon. So when you see another candle that has tarragon or another candle that has violet leaf, and you think, what does a violet smell like, let alone a violet leaf? Learn about it with me, and you'll get a better sense of it. So again, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create, right? So primary notes, the first three they list here for Greenhouse are Violet Leaf, Honeysuckle, and Mint. And the scent story, be transported to a sunlit summer afternoon in the greenhouse. Refreshing herbal notes of spearmint, eucalyptus, and tarragon, blended with watery cucumber, gently fade into wild honeysuckle, wisteria, and violet leaf. The floral sea mingles in the air with soft woods and warm amber. So let me get my nose on it and I'll tell you what I think. So initially my feeling is this is really a spa fragrance for me and, and I love fragrances that can lean to that sort of spa sense where it is rejuvenating and soothing. Now floral does come on first for me but it doesn't scream hot summer day on a southern porch the way that honeysuckle alone might. There is a hit of powder from honeysuckle and your wisteria florals but they're really countered with this sort of soft dewy cucumber and violet leaf and they add a fresh green but not pungent or truly herbal green aspect. Not so much that bracing herbal green that you get from some fragrances. Now, Greenhouse really is a great place for this candle to transport you because there is sort of the idea in a greenhouse of a bit of a hodgepodge of things being grown. You know, there's there are bushes that are in there before they're being taken out to be planted in the spring or summer heat. There maybe are fresh things, you know, just budding. It's a work space, it's not just you know, a beautiful botanic garden that you're visiting, it's a place for gardeners and horticulturalists to really do their work. So, you know, it is the workshop, the atelier of someone in that field. So what they do though, is they really masterfully blend and balance those sort of somewhat powdery florals with some dewy fresh notes, soft green, though not truly herbal notes, and then with a real sweetness that is sort of, I think provided both by both of the florals as well as some of our base notes. So you've got kind of a woody sweetness with that Texas cedar wood, and then the warm, sweet, honey-like headiness of amber. And they both then play off that sort of rich, warm, nectarous sweetness of the honeysuckle flower. Very well balanced, as all Lafco fragrances are. You're going to really get some opposing notes and fragrances, but that's the whole point of balance. You can't have everything on this side of the scale. You really have to have that balance, and they just kind of play perfectly off of each other. I will say it reminds me a lot, a lot, lot, lot of the Cucumber Mint Lafco fragrance from their Restorative Retreat Trio that was released last year. Huge fan of that. I actually think it's a wonderful trio for gifting. I, I think it is actually being clearanced out on their website, so it's a great deal right now if you want to pick up the trio of those three fragrances, which includes their award-winning Retreat, Cucumber Mint, as well as a Parsley Sage. I, I wish that they would bring those actually into their core collection. Retreat already is, but the other two I think would be standouts. This one is so similar, it's a true sister scent to the Cucumber Mint, and they actually do share five of the same notes. So Cucumber Mint also had Spearmint, Cucumber, Eucalyptus, Cedarwood, and Vetiver. Now, whereas that was sweeter and a bit more of a traditional kind of Cucumber Mint, borderline almost melon, this sister scent adds a, a, a somewhat heavy hit of the florals, the Wisteria and the Honeysuckle, perhaps even maybe that Amber for a bit of a, a warm fullness to, to really bolster that warm, heady aspect of honeysuckle flowers, but I do not believe they are the same. And I, I wish I still had my cucumber mint to compare side by side, but I do believe they are different. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think there was that sort of floral aspect, nor that sort of heady, warm depth of the amber in the cucumber mint. It was a bit thinner and cooler. This really takes us from, maybe that was an early spring, this takes us right into that that warm summer. One thing that I noted with, with this, whether this is a, a notes 
aspect or just sort of strength and throw aspect. When I sniff the box, which does capture some of the fragrance, I get more of that eucalyptus, tarragon, and cucumber that are some of the top notes. And some of those get a bit lost in the burn for me, with some of the florals actually edging them out, but those florals are, you know, true mid-notes. Um, and after all, the name is Wild Honeysuckle, so it makes sense that that would be the primary note that you're going to catch when you're burning the candle. Now let's get into the performance, the wicks, the wax, the strength, the throw, and projection. This is quite strong on cold. You know, if I had this sitting next to me on my sort of own little greenhouse area where I'm, I'm seated today, you do get whiffs of this, which you don't always get from spa-like green dewy fragrances, but the floral really helps carry that. I'd say when burning, medium to medium strong throw. When you think of, say, cilantro orange, which is the kitchen candle, and it's so good from Lofco, I love it. You light that thing, and within three minutes before it's fully pulled out, you are getting really great strength and throw, but there's some heavy hitter notes in there. This one, a solid medium. Frankly, I it's adequately strong. I wouldn't want it to be much stronger because florals, especially if there's some powder aspect to them, tend to choke you out and do a little bit of this. Like you're walking through, you know, a department store's fragrance, fine fragrance where they're misting you all the time. And healthy projection, again, thanks to a little bit of paraffin assisting that soy wax to get the fragrance molecules up in the air. As you can see here, has a healthy burn. I will say though, this is not new to Lafco. This is not new to any luxury candle or any candle, frankly, luxury or non, with this wide of a diameter and a single wick. It does take a, quite a while to pull out and it does not always pull out on its own. It does sometimes need assistance from typically what I'll use is a foil wrap. I wish there were an easier way to have a true, you know, good looking topper on this, but for now foil will work. And once you have that going and you just get fully pulled across here, typically you can take the foil off, enjoy the ambiance and the, the look of what the candle is meant to be. Unless your home is too cool, it may start receding a little bit and kind of cooling off around the edges, but I'd say eight times out of 10, once it gets fully pulled, it's going to stay fully pulled once you pull that foil off for the remainder of that burn. Sometimes we'll have to do it again, TBD. I'd say some candles based on the blend of the oils, based on a million variables, are gonna take longer and or require more babying when it comes to ensuring they have that solid pool across, but you do want that, otherwise you're going to not get great throw and projection and you'll be wasting wax as you just you know, canyon and tunnel a candle. So I wish there was something that could be done. I would love to maybe see Lafco do two wicks in this diameter. It's a healthy diameter. I think it could likely handle two wicks. You know, we see some companies th that offer that and I think would offer, though a shorter burn time, a better burn quality experience. So that would be my, my feedback that I'll continue to provide is I would love to see just some change to offer uh, an easier burn so that frankly when you give a gift it's not hey just so you know you might have to put a little foil on this blah 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 <laughs> but it's still worth it because it's beautiful and the fragrances are just you know master fragrances now let's do one of my favorite parts of the review here which is getting into the 11 top middle and bottom notes so there are 11 here so let's run right through them so top notes that first impression of the fragrance we have spearmint eucalyptus and tarragon spearmint i think everybody probably knows spearmint that is refreshing green herbal mint has that sweet cooling aspect that provides an uplifting feeling now spearmint unlike peppermint has no menthol in it so you're not going to get that true sort of vix whoosh feeling that you get from peppermint and that is because peppermint actually is a hybrid of spearmint and watermint whereas spearmint is a traditional softer sweeter mint then we go into eucalyptus i love eucalyptus i wouldn't have been able to pick it out in here though i do believe it is in there from sort of the airy aspects eucalyptus originated in australia there are actually 500 varieties it's citronella like sweet balsamic floral fresh airy clean minty woody citrusy green camphoraceous and sometimes a bit of a lemony aspect to it. Now, tarragon, you don't see that a lot in home fragrance or fine fragrance. It is used in cooking, typically in French dishes, oftentimes with chicken, and it's a fresh aromatic scent with a bit of a sweet spicy tone that kind of fades over time in a fine fragrance. It can be reminiscent of a fresh anise or think licorice or fennel or even a bit of a fresh celery. However, there are two tarragons, I only learned that in my research. There's a Russian tarragon that is more like a sweet grassy fragrance, and then your traditional French tarragon that is pungent, bittersweet, and oftentimes compared to fennel, anise, licorice. Getting into our middle notes, sort of the heart of the fragrance, we've got Spanish cucumber extract, which we'll talk about that in a second, violet leaf, bamboo, wisteria, and honeysuckle. Spanish cucumber, you're not going to get the typical essential oils the way that you would the same way of a flower. There's an extraction process that per my small amount of research, oftentimes is, you know, if cucumber is placed into say glycerin or something like that left overnight or for a few days, it will extract some of the natural 
oils or just fragrances, fragrance molecules within a cucumber to give an extract of that, which then can be utilized flavorings for food or in beauty products, skincare, etc. But of course, as we all know, cucumber is clean, crisp, that fresh green scent. Slightly sweet, a, a zingy touch of some cool top notes, that crunchy feel that we all know when we bite into a cucumber. Soft, delicate, kind of recalling that light freshness of green vegetables. Then we go into a violet leaf. So you may know the fragrance of violet flower, which is actually quite different than the violet leaf. Whereas the flower is powdery, soft, dewy, and romantic, the leaf smells quite different, actually more cool, a bit metallic, yet fresh, almost like newly cut grass. So while the flowers will add a powdery floral aspect, the leaf will smell green and often is used in watery fragrances, which again, there's not full on watery aquatic, but certainly dewy aspects to this greenhouse fragrance. Next up, bamboo, often more of a fantasy note since bamboo itself doesn't have much of a fragrance that would typically be used in a fine fragrance, but it often comes across as fresh, woody, dry, green, paper-like, or can lean aquatic, again, going into those very aquatic, fresh, dewy, sometimes astringent or sharp fragrances. Just used to conjure up nature, oftentimes very calming as we see bamboo in spas and just that sort of zen feeling. Wisteria, which is a, a big player in the fragrance, not really one of the most famous flowers in perfumery, uh, but it has sort of the headiness of tuberose, the seductive, sultry, almost animalic aspect of jasmine, a bit of the spice of freesia. Also can be cool, slightly watery, similar to say sweet pea, but said to be more elegant than sweet pea, a bit more mature, soft, slightly spicy, and a really nice floral to partner with honeysuckle here. Of course, I think we all know honeysuckle, that really bright, heady nectar, sweet, to me, hot midsummer floral fragrance. And as kids, maybe even as adults, you've tasted them where you just pull the bottom of the flower, you pull up the style, and then at the tip, there's just that little green nub that has one tiny little drop of nectar. You taste that, and it is that beautiful, sweet floral nectar. When what other flower are you easily able to consume the nectar from, like you're a full-size bumblebee or something? But I think we've all done that as kids, and that is what you get in a honeysuckle fragrance. A little bit like jasmine, honey tinged with vanilla, sometimes a little bit of a freshness like a lemon, floral, rich, enchanting, and really imparts a fullness to fragrance. Now getting into the bottom notes that are really going to be the final lasting impression of the fragrance, we've got Texas cedarwood, Haitian vetiver, and amber. Cedarwood, I always say, is one of my absolute favorite notes, certainly my favorite wood note in fragrance. It can be deep, dark, resinous, softly woody, earthy, sweet, it can be spicy, camphoraceous, cooling, think pencil shavings. It's less minty than pine and less musky than patchouli. Now what's interesting, I should do a whole video on cedars because there are two, there are many types of cedars, but there are two general families being a true cedar versus a juniper cedar, which is actually a juniper cypress, completely different family, but smells similar to your traditional cedar, often used in place of a true cedar. And the Texas cedar used here actually is a juniper, a cypress family shrub with berries. And Texas cedar is known to be woody sweet, slightly smoky or spicy, the graphite pencils, and it dries more sweeter and balsamic than some other cedars. Haitian vetiver, I think a lot of folks know vetiver, so it is a grass native to India. It's related to lemongrass and citronella, and the roots are pulled, they are aged, and then the oil is extracted from the dried roots. Typically, it will express an earthy, damp, woody fragrance, sometimes hints of leather, it could be nutty or smoky, yet still somewhat fresh and grassy. Some people say it smells like uncut grass on a warm day or even a sack of potatoes. Now, traditional Indonesian vetiver is that dry earth clay, let's call it mushroom style fragrance, whereas Haitian vetiver is known to be brighter, fresher, smoother, and smells initially of burnt wood and a sweet earthiness. Can very much see that here. I think if you like vetiver, you would like both expressions or types of vetiver, but this one does lean, brighter, fresher, which makes sense for this greenhouse candle versus something that's gonna get too earthy and kind of barnyard and out there. And then finally, amber. So amber, don't think amber meaning, you know, the thing they use in Jurassic Park where it's fossilized sap or resin from a tree with, you know, the DNA of a dinosaur in it. That's not amber, that's not what they're using. That's a sort of a fantasy fragrance or an accord, often based on ambigree, which is typically no longer used in fragrance, but amber is going to be an accord, a blend of different fragrance notes to bring forward something that is similar to ambergris. That blend of ingredients is going to be warm, rich, resinous, sweetly powdery, musky, perhaps animalic. And based on the, as I always say, 
natural byproduct of the sperm whale's digestive tract and then dries on the beach and goes from disgusting putrid to this oddly alluring, sweet, musky, leathery, animalic fragrance. Now, most often it's going to be an accord of benzoin, labdanum, some vanillas, tonka. So you'll get some something somewhat leathery, a bit of elements of tobacco or spices, honey-like, almost a, a sweet dried plum, a dry musk, leather, resinous scents like a frankincense, patchouli, or other musks. But we're looking for warm, powdery, sweet, rich, honey-like. And you do get that just a bit in here as something to give a foundation to the dewiness, the greens, the bright, somewhat musky, sweet, honeyed florals. So all told, those are the 11 notes that make up our Lafco New York Wild Honeysuckle Greenhouse Fragrance. If you are a fan of florals, absolutely recommend it. If you're not necessarily a major floral fan, but you can handle some florals in a spring into summer or enjoy honeysuckle or things like wisteria or let's say almost lilac, sort of fresh, dewy, sweet powderiness, countered with a fresh green dewy softness from your cucumber, from your spearmint, then I think you really would like this. For me, it's a great, frankly, spring candle. Not quite cooling, like the very first day of spring where you want some cooling greens, but soft, dewy, a bit sweet, and just very well, as I always say, so, so, so well balanced, like a beautiful symphony just working together on these notes. So big fan of Lafco, big fan of this fragrance, of this candle. So if you're a fan of that style of fragrance, then I definitely recommend adding the greenhouse candle to your collection. If you have any questions on this or any other Lafco candles that I've reviewed in the past, please do let me know below, and until next time, take care.